Hello, so today we're going to be talking about the different types of iPod docks you would have found. So this one came out in 2003. It's a Firewire version. It did not have a little RF scanner for remote. And when you opened it, you actually got a plug. A second Firewire cable was six feet long. The ones that you got with the iPod were only three feet. And then you had um, audio video cables. And this was a dock that cost $150. This was 100 and that one was 79 And the reason why these docks were so expensive is because they're very premium and the sound quality that comes out of these docks there's an amp in here and a DAC for the iPod so they actually sound better and it's a pretty good one too they did shrink the design a little bit going into 2005 which you see here is that the docks it's a little bit smaller on this end and a little bit smaller on that end. and we also got a second port for s video so what you could now do with your iPod is you could plug this in and then get an audio video digital cable connect that to like a tv to view photos no one ever did that i have only found one ipod that i've gotten in 50 i've received that actually had photos on it and it was a seventh gen people rarely ever use that feature but people love buying these docks and these docks are basically everywhere and i have the three full size stuff after this apple really stopped making docks for the ipod and this one is actually very hard to find this is a 2007 dock that came out with the iphone and the original iPod Classic, the first one that they called Classic, the 6th gen. They did not make that for the 3G, and because people had these still from older years, they didn't really need to upgrade because it did the same thing. Then these were all the different renditions. So all of this in here is sealed. When you open it up, you get the stereo connection kit and you get a little manual right there. And then you have this bracket which goes on here. This actually did not clip in. You can change the clips by pressing here, 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 and here to relieve. And you got some sizes. Here we have a 20 gig and then on here we actually have the 40 gigs so that like if we put big chungus on there the 60 g's do not fit on here which is sad so every time i'm down here i like have to get a new dock which is why i got this one and this one's going to be going back in here we have the monster cable which lives in here and i tried using this thing with my speaker setup here i don't really know how it works and it didn't really work when i used the seal never used apple firewire connector this one when you open it up you open it up just like an ipod fifth gen do the side you open it up like this like you would an iPod and here oh I'm four gig and the six gig mini Now, if you did have a first gen or a second gen like I do, these things are the least compatible Apple products of all time. These things just, I don't know what's the word. The word is suck. They launched the iTunes was not even a thing yet. You had your Firewire and your headphone jack up here. And I did a video about like the best iPod dock ever. And that was only because it actually worked and supported this generation, not with charging or anything, but with that jack. And these things really didn't have many charging options and people were really docking their iPods into like speed speakers because again high quality speakers are very expensive and they just plugged it in and then just chung up my way with some that way so the dock the 30 pin that was a great invention so that they could actually dock your iPod so you could transport audio if you wanted to and you could also transport data through that dock to other things so you could sync with the computer so you wouldn't have to move your iPod and also so you can like charge it at the end of the day like all of us have vertical stand wireless chargers mate this was like a vertical stand wireless charge you get your pod you get your thing and you do the thing and then it just charges, right? It's a drink. So you get this, you open it up, you lift it up. This is actually going right here. So we're gonna put that right there. You lift this up and then in here, your remotes would sit right here. This. Now the weird thing is that when you actually had this next to a computer, like an iMac, the remote didn't have a spark function on where the IR would go. So that kind of created some problems if it was like on a desk or something like that. Apple really didn't think about that. So people ended up having issues where they would like go to the next song and then it would would just open front row on their iMac. But if it was connected to the computer, then it would be fine. So you just had to make sure that that was connected to your computer if it was on a desk. Now this one is a little different. You open it up, it's got different pictures on it. We have our dock. It's the same version as that, but it's, so we have a little IR blaster, but it resembles the more MacBooks where it's thinner. Remote would sit right there, and then you would have your paper books and manuals there. And this is the iBooks logo that came later. Your iPod Touch 8 and 16 gig, your iPod Nano 3rd gen. You wouldn't get a Nano 2nd gen because those you can just pull. Oh, whoa. Because Nano 2nd gens, you can just put them on the dock and they don't really need support and they're not going to bend the 30 pin cable over time. The reason why that they came with these is so you didn't bend the 30 pin cable with your heavy 60 gig Dave. 
Oh, which one is which? Your iPod Video and iPod Classic 80G, those were the fifth gen. You also had the, the other fifth gen, so you could technically do a fourth gen in this model if you had like the older spares, or you could just chunk on my way with Sung without anything. I mean, the mini still fits in here, no problem. It's just that you're not gonna have that support, so it's whatever. And people usually upgraded their iPods every three years. There were some people that I know that bought one iPod and then bought one iPhone, but people, what they usually did is they usually had two iPods if they were an early adopter. If they just had the fifth gen, they usually just had that, and that was like their only iPod they ever owned, and then they got several iPhones. But the reason why this had to be made different is for the third gen Nano, so it could be moved more inward so they could have the better supporting dock. And that was the last change to the iPod docks. As we went into more iPhones, people stopped using iPod docks because of Apple not supporting the older iPods with including brackets in the box for the mini and the third gen and the fourth gen, and because people would lose the remote, and there was just too many sizes. The docks just couldn't fit them all and it became very, very impractical. The most important of all was the older ones were built really, really well. So well, in fact, that they would just keep working and working and working and people didn't really have a sense to upgrade them because if it fit in the 30 pin and it didn't break the 30 pin, they were just like, eh, whatever, I'm not buying the new dock. I'm just gonna keep using this one. And that's what people did. So Apple got out of the docking business. As you can see, it's proprietary to the iPhone original. It's a quite small little boy. You just put him in there. And this would sit here and it would do all the functions as the big boy dock, except for the remote. 